I'd like to show you how to use the SVG Optimizer utility. Go up to the Utilities menu and choose SVG Optimizer. Here we can drag in an SVG file to start optimizing it. There's a lot of different documentation right here on the page or you can go to the Help system and view the documentation there. So let's take a look here. Let's drag this tiles.svg file in here. Now we can see some information about our SVG file. If we designed it in Illustrator, it'll be 72 DPI. If it's in Inkscape, it'll be 90 DPI, and some other systems use 96 DPI. Depending on what kind of program you use to create your SVG file, you'll need to select the appropriate DPI for this information to work out. And then you need to decide whether you want to display the units in pixels, inches, or centimeters. In my case, I did it in Illustrator, so 72 DPI is good and inches is good. So down here we can see that the total length of my SVG file is 31 inches, a little bit over 31 inches. The path or the areas that will be cut on this file is a little over 20 inches and then there's about 10 inches of travel length. A travel length is the length that a laser head when it's cutting with SVG files would have to travel that isn't a cut. So the path length is the part that's going to get cut. The travel length is not going to get cut. We have a couple of things that we can turn on or off here. So direction markers are these little arrows right here which indicate which direction that we're going to trace around these lines. So you can see this arrow is moving this direction and this arrow is moving this direction. But then if we go over here, we have our cut order. Uh, so we know that uh, this one has a 1 on it, this one has a 2 on it down here, this one has a 3 on it. So they're going to be cut in this order. This It'll start with this one, it'll go around here and then it'll go to this one and it'll go around this way and then we can go to number three up here. But first let's take a look. We can see the laser is going to have to do this, then this, then this. That's not very optimized. We'd like the laser to just start cutting kind of up here somewhere and then go down to one to another one and come back up and then end. So right now we've got 10 inches of wasted travel path uh, and we'll try to get that down as part of this. So, not just viewing the travel path, we can actually animate the entire cut. So here you can see how it's traveling around each of these things. Ultimately there, and now we can see the direction of flow here. So, that can help us figure out the best way to optimize our file. So let's go ahead and try splitting our paths. We need to nick our files so that these uh, cuts don't fall out of the sheet. If they fall out of the sheet, they can get lost in the laser. So we want them to stay in the sheet, and therefore we put little nicks or little splits in the line that will stop it from falling out of the sheet when it gets cut, because we won't be cutting all the way through the sheet. Just these little, little places. For this, I'm going to put in a few different cuts. We need to have at least a couple of cuts per item. Uh, ideally, you want to have kind of two or three. Let's go ahead and start putting some in. When I choose split path here, this will allow me to start putting in cuts based on just where I want to click. So let's start with this number three one up here. I'll start uh, clicking on that. And then it says, click on the path that you want to split. So I'm going to split kind of up here. I want the laser to come in, and we're going to cut right there. Do I want to split the path there? Yeah. Okay, so you can see that it made a new split right there. Then as it traces down, I want it to go here and split and then go into this one. Let's go ahead and do another split. So I'm going to click over here and then I'm going to click kind of in the middle here and split that path. All right, let's continue on down our other cuts. So let's split here, right here kind of in the middle and then We'll split it again, kind of here in the middle, like so. And then we will split on this path, right about here, and right about here. So now we've got some splits in here. And you do usually want kind of uh, two to three nicks in your file, like I said. So we can go with these little nicks that we have here. But we can merge paths back together if we feel like we made a mistake or we don't want quite as many. So how you can do that is go to Connect Paths 
and then you'll just select the paths that you want to reconnect. So maybe, maybe I want to reconnect the, this nine path and this seven path here. I would just click on one that I want to connect and then I would click on another one that I want to merge it with. And do I really want to merge those? Yes, I do. And so now they have merged into a single path and then I have this other path over here. Now you don't have to do that. It's just, again, I'm just showing you how this works if you did want to do that. So now we can make some massive improvements if we just reorganize these. So we want to start this, we want this to be our first cut here. And right now it's number eight, and then we want number two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. So we want, to, we want it to kind of go around in a circle here. We can reorganize these paths. You can see the numbers on there right now are not in the ideal optimized order. So if we go up here to change position, so for example, I can click on a position and I can type in a new one, and we hit save. And you can see that it's making some changes in that regard. But the much better way to do that is to go to sequence paths. This makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna start with position one, and we just click here, and then position two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. So now you can see that we've saved 28% overall and we've taken that 10 inches that we originally had of travel path down to just one or a little bit over one. So 84% we cut out of that particular travel path. So now if we were to animate our path, we can see that the laser takes a much, much more optimized path in cutting. And that will make for a much cheaper file. The only thing that's left to do is to go ahead and download the file. So here you just hit that and you hit save SVG and save and it downloads to your computer. So that's how you use SVG Optimizer. Thanks for watching this Component Studio tutorial.